In this video, I want to explore the principles behind IFS therapy. In the next video, we're going to dive into how the process works and what the steps and tools are IFS is using. But in this video, it's really about what are the principles that that process is based on. Because I think there are a few very unique perspectives that IFS is taking and having that really form the base of how the whole process works. And I think talking about those principles, talking about those foundations a little bit, will make it a lot easier to follow what we will dive in in much more detail in the next video. These are, in my opinion, the most important principles that IFS is based on. And the first principle is the self is the agent of healing. And I think this cannot be overstated. I already talked about this in the last video, but getting it is at the core of what IFS is about. The self is the agent of healing for the inner system. That means with every client, with every person, their self is the agent, meaning the place where the healing comes from. This distinguishes IFS from other therapies that think that at the core of the relationship with the therapist or thinking about something in a certain way brings about the change. For IFS, what brings about the change is that the parts and the self reconnect. What brings about the change is that the self can hold the parts, be with the parts, understand the parts in a new way, and that's how change happens. That also means as a therapist, as somebody who uses IFS, all we are there for is to be there with our own self, but also to support the client to connect from self to parts. That's all we're there for. That's all the whole process is built, built around, is reconnecting and then allowing the self to be the agent of healing, which is actually what it naturally does. Through these eight C's, let me see if I can find them here, yes. Through the eight C's, um, meaning that the self is naturally connected, that the self is naturally curious, compassionate, calm, courageous, healing will naturally happen. If the self connects with the part, healing is the natural consequence of that. So that's all we have to do, encouraging that connection. Now, second really important principle in IFS is parts are intelligent and you can interact with them. And I think that's, for me at least, that was such a game changer to understand that parts themselves, the parts that get active in me, they are intelligent. Number one, they have a positive intention. They want to do something good for my system. But also I can interact with them. That means if a part comes up, I can ask it questions. I can try to get to know it and it will answer me. I can ask it to do something and it will decide whether it does that or not. This has fundamentally shifted the way I interact with myself and my parts. Where before I had this mindset of I am doing something inside of me, I am making that go away, I am pushing that away, I am drawing a boundary. Through this insight that parts are intelligent, they are like their own little beings and I can interact with them, it's now more of an asking, it's a getting to know, it's a connecting with the part. And through that interaction, I, I am with myself and I hold myself in a completely new way. And I think that insight, that parts interact, that parts have their own intentions, but also that if I connect with them, they respond. Not always the way I want them to, <laughs> but uh, they respond and they have their own intelligence is, I think, a game changer for how we can be with ourselves, but also how inner work and therapy can work. So that's the second really important principle. This leads right into the next point, which is all parts have good intentions 
even if their strategies suck. Now, I think that's a really important thing to get, and we've talked about that quite a bit in the previous videos, but also for how IFS therapy works, how IFS as an approach works, it's about realizing that each single part has a positive intention. How they act on that intention, how they try to get there, might be horrible. They might be creating suffering, pain, and it might just be plain obviously not working. But the positive intention is there. And if you interact with parts in such a way that you assume and you grant them that they have a positive intention, that what they're trying to do is good for me and for the whole system, but at the same time you grant them that maybe their strategies are a bit outdated, maybe they're using strategies a five-year-old would be using, maybe they're not optimal, but you can separate that. Yes, they are doing something that's not very smart, but why they do it has a positive core that changes how we interact with whatever is happening. And I've just noticed that, that even if there are parts in me that do extreme things and that do things where afterwards I'm like, whoa, why did I just do that? I have that knowledge now that there is a positive intention behind it, even if how it's done, how it's implemented, really does not work very well. But that way I can interact with whatever is happening in me in a totally different way, as long as self is there, then if I assumed, oh, that part that just did something bad must have also had a bad intention, which is, I think, how many people assume things happen. Oh, if what you did was bad, there must have been a bad intention. And I think that's just plain wrong. The next point is, the part does not equal its burden. What does that mean? That means that the part that's hurt, that's carrying the hurt from the pain, is not the same as the pain. That means it took on that pain, it experienced that pain and it's still there, but, it, but it's separate. And if we heal that pain, unburden them, they will return to a more natural and more healthy state. The same is true for the protectors. So a protector is not its role. The part itself is not how it acts, how it thinks, what it does internally to avoid the pain of the exile, but it's separate from that and it's just taken on that role. Once the exile doesn't need to be protected anymore, or once the, uh, the protector has been freed, they will take on a different role that is much more healthy, that has actual capacities. So just separating the burden or the role from the part itself allows more space to be there when we're interacting with a part, even though it might have an extreme role. We understand the part itself is not that role. And once the part realizes, I don't have to do that anymore, they usually let go of it naturally and happily because they don't want to do their, their role usually. So often for these parts to know you don't have to do that anymore, but you can still exist is a very big thing. Now, this naturally leads into the next points, which is that exiles have to be healed or unburdened before protectors can transform. This is very important to realize. As long as the protector knows that there is still an exile that needs to be protected, or an exile that the system needs to be protected from, they will continue what they're doing. You might be able to negotiate with them and how they're doing it, and there might be a little bit of change. But for this protector to actually let go of its role, to not do what it's doing anymore, the exile has to be healed. Because as long as that pain is there, as long as those intense emotions are there, the protector will still know my job is needed, otherwise this might overwhelm the system, otherwise this part might be hurt again. 
So it needs that healing, it needs that unburdening before this um, part can be fully transformed. And this really informs IFS in how to work with parts. Because we know, yes, the protectors are usually what we meet first, but also that before we can fully transform the protector, it needs a letting go or a healing of the exile. And when that exile is healed, when that exile is unburdened, usually the transformation of the protector works almost automatically. The protector needs to be sure that the exile is healed, but then it lets go of its role ah, gladly. And the last principle, and this for me is the foundation of how IFS works, is all parts are welcome. All parts are welcome means every part we have, every part that exists in me, every part that exists in you, all of these parts are welcome. In therapy, even though we might be working with this part, with the protector, and another part comes up and blends with us, takes over, that's welcome as well. If we have opinions about other people or about other parts, that's welcome. All of the parts are welcome and this goes back to they are intelligent, they have positive intentions. So any part that comes up in our life, in a therapy session, whenever, is welcome because we can interact with it. We can learn about why it's active right now. We can learn about what it fears, what it wants to protect us from. So by being open to any part, but treating them as intelligent, so for instance, being able to ask them, okay, this part has taken over, I now feel incredibly aggressive against the part who is saying I need to work harder, can that part just step aside? Okay, it can step aside. How do I feel about it now? Oh, now I'm much more calm, curious. Oh. So we can interact with them, but we welcome all of them. We don't try to push any away. We don't try to assume we know better what should happen in our inner system because every part has its own intelligence. And following that, welcoming that, is actually the most natural way therapy and sessions can go. We can say the same thing again we said at the end of the last video. Basically, the whole IFS process is a way of bringing these principles into life, of using these principles, these insight, on how healing can happen on the inside. It's a way of allowing the self and the parts to interact. It's a way of treating the parts as intelligent. It's a way of understanding that they can be unburdened, but also realizing they are not their burden. Of realizing each one of them has a positive intent and putting that into action. And that's what this next video is about. In this next video I want to show you the IFS process and these are uh, the steps of the IFS process I will dive into in the next video. Um, as they are taught by, the, um, by Richard Schwartz and the IFS team, it's the so-called six F's and um, I want to just present them, I want to present them in this way I've created and really give an overview over what are the steps of a session, what are the steps of getting to know a part, healing a part and why are they there? Why are these steps what have evolved as the method that IFS is using in teaching therapists all across the world?